The Coleman Medal. The Norm Smith Medal. Brownlow Medal. is Jimmy Bartell. Matthew Lloyd. We know just how good Collingwood are, Jimmy, but I think Friday night we'll find out just how good the Western Bulldogs are because Collingwood are the benchmark of the competition and they're this good because of the way they ping off half-back, in my opinion. So have a look at the numbers they can get back on you in defence. So this is the Gold Coast early in this game last week going inside 50. That was McCreary on the mark and Markov looking to get back to support the likes of Howe and Darcy Moore. So there's McCreary go. And watch Alec Markov, who played for the Gold Coast Suns not so long ago. So they run past about five or six Gold Coast Suns players to allow for this. They can't defend that, the Gold Coast Suns, because of the way they ping off half. But here's another one. So here's Scotty Pendlebury. He looks at Matty Rowell and says, you know what, you're not a factor because I can see the eye line of the player not going down. So Chris gets back to support. So does Dacos and so does Pendlebury. They outnumber at the source and then they just go, Jim, and they are away. And then Gold Coast have got no chance because there's not enough heat on the ball and they get it back over the top. And this is confidence in your team system and it becomes really predictable. And this allows for errors because yeah. everyone knows what's going on. So even if the ball's heading that direction, you can butter up off a mistake. Here's the midfield matchup. So this is where the dogs, in my opinion, have a chance. So to their credit, their pressure around the midfield is number one in the comp. The concern for them is the scoring, though, from those stoppage. So the Pies aren't the best pressure-wise, but they pounce on you and do get maximum damage for those stoppages, Jim. Yeah, and they're, they're efficient. That forward handball releases someone into space. And once you create that forward handball, that person can pick their way through. So we see some entries here from the Dogs. And Riley West, for me, particularly in the last quarter, Lloydie, you know, the opportunities that he created has been the sub. So they were huge in the last quarter. The three man on Dockers hit the front, and it all started with Bont and Pally, Liberatore and Trelaw, who got, it, got them over the line. Yeah, and you just have to take territory sometimes. A lot of sides look for the perfect entry, but sometimes if you just take territory and get in after it, good things can happen. And this is the stoppage goals we touch on. That This is where Collingwood are the best in the comp. They targeted Tom Mitchell. They get goals out of him. Nick Dacus has gone in. Jordan Ngoi comes back in this game. But now this is the last one to show. This just wasn't good enough. Lipinski, you know, from the Suns, gets out the back and, and they just make you punish you. That's where they coach really well. On. And I want to highlight off the back of that, Lloydie, you, you mentioned those numbers and they can go a long way to beating Collingwood in these numbers because of this guy. High football IQ. He just waits for Tim English, just lobs it into space, identifies the matchup. And I always refer to Libra. He's the Footscray in Western Bulldogs. He's the most probably loved player of Bulldogs fans. But he he does it all. Up until three-quarter time, he nearly had a triple-double in basketball sense. He had 21 touches, 10 clearances, 9 tackles. He's the grunt that gets him going, but it's also his football smarts. He identifies the key players for the opposition and puts the clamps on them as well. You're tipping the pies? You, you can't not go against yeah. the pies at the moment. Uh, Saturday night, it's uh, Melbourne and St Kilda at the MCG. And I want to highlight here the run home for both teams. So they're fighting for top four spot on Saturday night. Whoever wins will be fourth. And there's, there's eight games to go. They've got the Saints six teams who are outside the top eight currently in that run home. So there's an opportunity for them. Melbourne have five teams outside the top eight. So this is a huge four points to win on Saturday night. Uh, the scoring maps, Jim, you've, yep. you want to highlight why they're not scoring as well as they could. Well, you touched on Melbourne a little bit earlier and their scoring issues. So this is round one against the Dogs. So round one to 11, Melbourne were the number one scoring side and efficiency in front of goal. But it's very easy to be efficient. Look at all these shots in between the point posts. These are the ones I want to highlight. They're pretty much your 80 percenters, really, in AFL footy that you should knock over. But I think they've overcorrected with their defensive play, which slows down their ball movement, which we'll highlight a little bit later. This is the scoring map, round 12 against Carlton. This is a win, which is great, but they've only kicked 60 points. But look where you're taking all these shots. It took some brilliant goal kicking to actually get them over the line. You've got four from 50. Again, these are really difficult shots, not in Can between. I ask you, is this because Simon Goodwin's too safe and he kicks it here because it protects them defensively? Yeah, I think they, they're overplaying to their strength. And I know that sounds really strange, but when you've got Gorn and Grundy, you're happy to take ball-ups and boundary throw-ins. When you've got the back line they've got, they're trying to defend with the ball, which has come into footy nowadays. We've got the football in a great spot here down at Canadian Park. But the first instinct is to hit it over here on the mm. boundary line. Even if you take the mark, that's a difficult shot. Again, another entry, slow entry, wide. You touched on a bit before. Could it be a personnel thing that helps straighten you up? Or do you just generate something by wheeling off the mark and hitting more dangerous oh, I'm with you. Great. I think they've got to be more aggressive. So, Rowan Marshall, he would normally fear Gorn and Grundy. I don't think so in this game. They should be fearing him. 
I think he's a smoky for the All-Australian Ruckman, uh, Rowan Marshall, with what he's doing this year. And they share the ruck, so these stats are a bit skewed, but he was best on ground again last week, having an awesome season. And Well, I think you only need to go to last week. A lot of stoppages. Uh, Karen Briggs, who's been in fantastic form for the Keep Giants, the he plays in a very here. similar fashion to Rowan Marshall. And you look at all this. This is not sexy. This is just bodying up but following up. That's the key thing for Rowan Marshall. Stay involved, you can get some clearances. If the Ruckman pushes back or forward, you don't have to create anything exciting. Just get next to him and can beat him in the contest. All these edits, it's just Briggs battling, fighting, fighting, nudging, doing everything to stay in the contest. You'll be a high clearance player. Look at this, wins a free kick here, Briggs on, on Grundy. That's how uh, Rowan Marshall can attack this week. So you go on the Demons in this I'm, one? I'm still backing the Demons. Yeah, I'll back the Demons in this one as well. On Sunday, it's a fight for 7th and 8th position. Who stays in the 8th? Who goes out of it? Uh, the Bombers v the Adelaide Crows. And the game styles are very, very different. So the Adelaide Crows go super aggressive. So they've done this all year. This is why they're one of the great sides to watch in the competition because they'll just go. They'll go super aggressive and their skills have improved. They've got a front half that why wouldn't you want to get in there nice and quick? Versus the Bombers under Brad Scott, they've suddenly become more controlled and they'll try and possess the footy uh, like this, Jim, where they just measure. They'll just take those short passes and not try and give teams uh, they can counter punch and get them on turnover. Yeah, Essen are really good at slowing you down. I know they give away a, a lot of inside forward 50s from the opposition's uh, back half to front half, but they do them slow. So at least gives uh, Ridley, Laverde, Redmond, all their backs, Zerk Thatcher, an opportunity to come over and help out. So the Crows keep the pace on the game before Essen gets set. They'll get lots of opportunities. So Zach Merritt, the captain of the Bombers for the first year, everyone's saying that he's just single-handedly, along with Brad Scott, changing the way this team is. So. We all know what a great player Zach Merritt is. These kicks and death touches are as... This pass is nearly the pass of the season. That is as good as it gets. Not many players in the comp can do that, if anyone else. But it's what he started to do from his pressure, Jim, that he's demanding a lot of his teammates and he's added this element to his game. He's, he's stepped up. He just looks like a guy who's completely in control of his game and he just is going out and playing footy. I don't want to oversimplify it, but look at this. He's just in every contest. You hear the crowd, his teammates would love this. But for me, Lloydie, the man here, Jordan Dawson, is a Brownlow favourite, but he's come off the half-back flank, so you need to fill that role. And I think they've found someone who's playing some really good footy going under the radar in Mitch Hinge, who had a really good game last week. Seven intercept marks, 12 intercept possessions. That's important because, as I mentioned, Duday's moved up, uh, Duday's out at the moment. Dawson's moved up the ground. And you've got two key defenders who play more shutdown negating roles. So you need someone to float over, intercept and create some drive off the half-back. And Mitch Hinge does that. And being that 190 centimetres, he can float between different positions for the Adelaide Crows. Well, I'm going down the other end and I hear a lot about Callum Wilkie and I hear a lot about Tom Stewart. But this guy's a best and fairest winner at Essendon, uh, Jordan Ridley. Never, ever gets spoken about. So he takes down the best every week and he marks it about 10 times every single game. But no-one ever talks about him, so I think he's one to watch for everyone. If you haven't probably appreciated him just yet, this guy is already a best and fairest winner and may well win another one, Sam. So I'm tipping the Bombers at Marvel. I'm going to go the Bombers because it's at Marvel. A defining round coming up, Sam.